Hello YouTube, how you doing today? This is Alvood Piper here. Uh, today, I am smoking my beautiful Meerschaum Lion Head. Very nice pipe with some Best of Show by McClellan. If you like a real nice aromatic, um, very fruity, but not strong and not it doesn't bite at all. Try the best of show from McClellan. It's excellent. So I was thinking about when I was a kid a while ago and at one time in the year 1963 to 1964 I thought I had a calling to the priesthood. I was a youngster then. It was over 50 some odd years ago. So I entered the junior seminary, uh, the Salesian Junior Seminary in Goshen, New York. And uh, it's got an interesting history <clears throat> and uh, more of a haunted history. And uh, I thought I'd share some of the, the background with you. Um, Back in 1834 to 1864, somewhere around there, a fellow by the name of David Haight uh, built a mansion on over 400 acres of land up in Goshen, New York. Now, the, uh, the land, uh, the mansion that was on the land ultimately became the administration building for the seminary that I attended. But David passed away in 1876, and he was buried in a mausoleum, a family mausoleum that's actually on the property there. Whether or not it's there till today, I'm, I'm not sure. But uh, so, originally over 400 acres, in 1922, the property went into foreclosure. And the Salesian order of Catholic priests purchased the property for $61,000. Not a bad deal. Well, in uh, 1925, they started a school for boys. And that school ran from 1925 all the way to 1961. In 1961, it became the Salesian Junior Seminary, which was like a prep seminary for high school student uh, age boys uh, prior to entering the novitiate, which would be uh, the early stages of, of uh, becoming uh, a priest. Uh, the school, the, the seminary actually was open from 1961 to 1985 when it closed and primarily it closed due to um, lack of vocations uh, lots of lots of uh, men uh, I guess at that point decided that they weren't interested in the priesthood for one reason or another I guess things change and uh, even today I think the church struggles with vocations, but uh, in any event, the main schoolhouse, which which was the the seminary itself, was constructed in 1931. A beautiful big red brick building, uh, and uh, eventually, I guess from 85 to 91, it just languished. Uh, and then in 91, the city of Goshen purchased the property from the Salesians. And the only thing that the uh, Salesians actually own on the property at this point is um, the cemetery. Excuse me a second. The cemetery. And uh, the cemetery has... Uh, Quite a few Salesians buried there. Uh, 
unfortunately one of one of the people buried was a student uh, that was there when I was there and I I don't know what the cause of his death was or anything like that but uh, obviously being over 50 years ago I know very little of what went on uh, except it was a very interesting occurrence um, while we were at our summer facility which was up in the Catskills in the summer of 1964 on August 9th 1964 a young boy by the name of Paul Ramos Jr. fell or was pushed or was thrown from the roof of the school building now during the summers while the seminarians were up in uh, up in the Catskills the school was used as a summer retreat uh, summer camp for young boys and no one knows exactly what occurred but uh, from what I understand that foul play was was expected and surmised but no one no one in law enforcement could get a straight answer as to what occurred and uh, about six years after the incident uh, there was a fire at the school and all the records were burned of any anybody attending that summer camp that year kind of interesting but anyway so the medical examiner indicated that he definitely could not have fallen from the roof. He fell 36 feet to his death, nine years old. From the position of the body and how far away he was from the building, they surmised that he was obviously pushed or thrown. Now, I guess it looked like a cover-up at the time because they didn't get very much uh, cooperation from the school officials, which is unusual. But when we returned from the Catskills to start the new term in September, we never even heard about the incident. It was never spoken about, it was never communicated, and in fact, I only found out that this child fell off the roof many, many years later, when I happened to be looking back and researching my old school and I came across an article that spoke about that so it was kind of hush hush not very pleasant situation and I remember that ladder going up to that roof because I think I was on the third floor and now my mind might be a little foggy at this point but I always remember that roof being locked I remember specifically we were told that we were not to go up there and the fact that it was locked we obviously couldn't go up there and even if it was open for some reason I don't think we were allowed up there it was off balance so whatever happened happened and sadly that little boy was was dead anyway fast forward I guess I find out later on, I left in, the, in September of 64. I decided that wasn't the life for me. Um, the year I spent there was a wonderful year. I absolutely have no regrets. Um, but what I also found out later on doing some re research is that there was significant abuse, sexual abuse going on, either by some of the brothers or by some of the priests. In fact, at one point, even a director was uh, was cited for alleged abuse in the early 70s which really disturbed me because in my year there I had never seen anything like that never even a glimpse of, of that sort of uh, behavior so anyway uh, I guess the, the uh, lesions paid out um, about over 19 million dollars to 17 complainants 
I don't think anybody was ever arrested. I think uh, settlements were made and that was the end of it, uh, other than the scars that were left on those victims, so it's just a terrible thing. A very, a very sad mark, black mark, on, on a wonderful organization, so unfortunately. Well, anyway, so fast forward, the school's closed. The city purchases it. So now, many stories surround the school. There is um, there's stories about hauntings, um, about ghosts, about noises, about so a couple of these uh, paranormal groups decided to uh, to go there and. The school was now surrounded by a big high fence, so you really couldn't get in legally. These people would sneak in. And one guy uh, stayed there from dusk until dawn by himself. That's some kind of crazy person because, first of all, the school was very dilapidated. Uh, it was coming apart. It was very dangerous to be in there. and. Uh, so this guy stayed there, and he heard all kinds of noises, uh, saw apparitions, um, kinds of things that one would say, oh, come on, you you got to be kidding. Well, the problem is he's not the first one that reported that. Other groups have gone in there and have experienced similar situations. So, anyway... When they were demolishing the mansion, that was the administration building, um, the construction workers were in the mansion dismantling it and they heard glass breaking in windows that had no glass in them. Uh, they heard noises, they heard all kinds of things. People in the town itself who lived across the street from, from the uh, school said they saw things, uh, apparitions, and that sort of thing. So, if you go online, you can actually look it up. It's called Salesian Junior Seminary, Goshen, New York. And I'm gonna put a few photographs uh, throughout this video, uh, giving you an idea what, what it originally looked like when I attended, and unfortunately, what it came to be. Uh, and the sad thing is I could actually look at those photographs and put myself in those rooms because I was in every one of those rooms, down the stairways, in the classrooms, in the chapel. It's a real eerie feeling. And some of the ghosts that they say inhabit the structure um, could be the little boy who was thrown from the roof uh, there are other individuals that, uh, and if you look at some of the photographs and the video that the, the paranormal people took, you can literally see wisps of, of figures uh, floating through the halls and in the chapel. Very, very scary. I don't know if I'd like to be there. But it was a, a very significant part of my life that one year. Uh, it was a pivotal point in my life. And I wouldn't have given it up for anything. It was, uh, it was a very austere time. Uh, there was no candy, no chewing gum, none of that kind of stuff. Three meals a day, that was it. And breakfast was pretty meager. And I can remember, till this day, I enjoy peanut butter and jelly on toast for breakfast, because we used to have that quite a bit there. But. It's part of my past, and I'll always respect that facility for what it was. Uh, our director at the time was a very holy man. I mean, this man was the closest thing to a saint that you can find. And uh, I guess he got moved, he got transferred, and it was only after he left that some of the alleged uh, abuse took place, which is absolutely sickening. But. Uh, 
when you're thinking about young boys, 14, 15 years old, a lot of them probably are so afraid when the situation takes place that they, or, or they feel so embarrassed to say anything about it. And it's only years later when they're men that they, uh, they have these bad, bad feelings, almost like PTSD. Very sad situation. So anyway, uh, if you get a chance to go online and, and Google that, uh, some interesting stories about it. Obviously, it will give you a lot more information than I gave you, but um, I was glad to be able to share it with you, and I was very proud to, to have been part of that. So, till I speak it again with you again, um, as always, health and happiness to you and yours, and thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it very much. Thank you.